Hello, good evening and welcome to Sri Lanka Cricket. We are here for a free match briefing ahead of the fifth uh, ODI between Sri Lanka and Australia. As you all know that Sri Lanka has already clinched the series 3-3 three, three, uh, by winning three games. And uh, we do have head coach Chris Silovud with us to answer the questions that you are going to pose. And uh, who wants to ask the first question? I can see Saudi Taufik. Please raise your, uh, ask your question. Hi, Chris. Uh Hi. Um, after you, your, you, um, you, uh, this, uh, your experience with England in the Ashes to last Ashes tour, how satisfying was it for you to beat the old enemy in this ODI series? And also, can you take us through how it was achieved? It's, uh, I mean, obviously, yeah, I had a, a, a rough winter, uh, obviously in Australia. Uh, Obviously, I mean, they're a very, very difficult team to beat, obviously, in their own backyard. So, I mean, winning here was was very satisfying. Uh, but more, I mean, more satisfying for me was the progress of the team as we've we've made our way through this journey so far. Just to see, obviously, the tactics coming together, uh, to see guys out in the middle scoring runs, to see how we've chased turtles down. I thought our run chase uh, in that game was absolutely fantastic. The way that we kept up with the the scoreboard and the way that we managed our way through it again against a team that is very good uh, and equally the way that we've absorbed pressure when we've been out there with the ball and we've we've managed to keep pushing pressure back onto the australians and force results in our favor and to me one of the most exciting things is that we're still nowhere near the potential that we have in that team but yes yet we are still pushing one of the best teams in the world and obviously beating them in our conditions. So to me, that's very exciting. It means that we've got more to come. Uh, and if the guys keep learning uh, and keep progressing the way they are, then all being well being a very strong position to to challenge anywhere in the world. Dambikar Atni will go ahead with your question, please. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi. Hello. Yeah, Chris, I want to find out now, uh, under your uh, coaching, uh, uh, Bangladesh Test Series first you won. Now already Sri Lanka one day uh, one day series against Australia. How do you rate about the Sri Lankan players' performance? And especially I want to mention about two young players, uh, Charit Asalanka and Patum Nishanka. Yeah, <clears throat> obviously I mean it's, it's it's great to come in and and start off on a on a sort of a, a winning footing, so to speak. <clears throat> but like I say, it's. For me, it's more about the progression that we are making. Uh, we are putting, you know what I mean, sort of just strategies, uh, a method in place that we can follow. And we know if we follow those strategies that, you know what I mean, we can win games of cricket, really. So it's, it's becoming tactically more aware uh, and having, you know what I mean, things in place that we can follow, really, to make things a lot simpler for us. Uh, and I mean, obviously, the two players you mentioned, it's been absolutely fantastic to to see them go out there and score runs, really, uh, and put their hands hands up in difficult times at times, uh, absorb pressure and come out and put us in winning positions. Um, and to see them do well is, you know, I mean, for me, is absolutely brilliant. And one thing that we do try and do within the team is enjoy each other's success. So whenever any of the lads do well, you know, I mean, the, the rest of the players and the coaching staff, we all really enjoy that. And it's great to see them doing well. And hopefully that will give them confidence moving forward. Uh, confidence in their own ability to cope at this level. Uh, confidence in how they're going to score the runs. And confidence in the way that the team are playing. But actually we are on the right track. Uh, if we keep doing the basics well, it will put us in strong positions. Rex Clemente, go ahead with your question, please. Chris, uh, great to see uh, the performance of uh, several young players and uh, congratulations on the series win. But the reality is that uh, uh, Sri Lanka are not uh, going to make it to the next year's World Cup uh, in India automatically. They've got to probably play the uh, qualifications, qualifying round. Um, how do you sort of uh, see the thing having just beaten the world's one of the top sides and uh, what do you need to do uh, to make sure that you are getting there uh, in India next year? Yeah, I mean, it is. I mean, we are in the situation we're in. We have to accept that. Uh, but all we can do is prepare the best we can. And I think the way that we've been putting plans into place during this series will then help us move forward and win games in front of us. And that's all we can do. We just, you know, we concentrate on the next game. 
what do we need to put in place? We train hard for that and we put the processes there that means actually we can we can beat anybody that is in front of us. And that's what we have to do. It is as simple as that. And if we have to do it the hard way, then we'll do it the hard way. But, uh, for me, it's all about putting the processes in place and the tactics in place and making sure that the players are in a good a position as possible to win the games that we need to win. Louis Cameron. Hey, Chris, uh, Louis Cameron from uh, cricket.com.au. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, uh, Australia have been uh, been vulnerable against uh, spin bowling the um, the last few times uh, they've come to the subcontinent. Um, do you see that? Uh, I mean, do, have you been encouraged by what you've seen from how they've played spin in these last few um, one days and uh, thinking about it from a test point of view? Uh, obviously, it's... Um, it, it is a challenge. I mean, I've been here with other teams where we've faced, you know, I mean, spinning conditions, and it is a challenge for the opposition, uh, and certainly one that, you know, I mean, we are thinking about moving forward. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, we have to play that spin well as, you know, I mean, also when, when we go into there. Uh, and the one thing that we have done so far is played the spinners very well, um, and it's something that, you know, I mean, I'm encouraged by to, to see our players doing. Uh, and I think it is a way that we can we can put pressure on oppositions. So it's certainly, I mean, I'm not ruling anything out moving forward into the test series. Um, certainly conversations that we need to be to be having with the, the selectors and the captains. You brought up the um, the Ashes uh, series. Louis, uh, I'll come back to you. Just give okay. uh, Ranjit, okay. you can go ahead with your question. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh, two hi. questions for you. Uh, one is actually, can you give us an update about uh, Vanidu's injury situation? He looked a bit... Uh, uh, not 100% in the last game and also about Dusmanjo Chamira. And my second question is, uh, we've seen these uh, signs uh, that you have put up. Uh, we saw that uh, with England as well. And yeah. you are using that again uh, with Sri Lanka. So, please give us an idea of uh, what sort of, uh, what do you mean by those uh, signs? Oh, I'm not going to give too much away, but <laughs> no. Uh, let's start with the players to start. Obviously, uh, we'll be putting a team out shortly. So, I'm not going to go too much into depth. Uh, but obviously, we have to take into consideration now that, you know, I mean, whether or not it is worth risking some of these players. Uh, it was last game, obviously, because we want to put the series to bed. So we have to take a, you know, I mean, a look at it now, whether or not it is worth putting players in a situation where we can risk more injury. Uh, so that's certainly something we're talking about. Um, so you will see shortly with the team that we release, uh, which way we've decided to go on that one. Uh, from the, the, the signs point of view, but obviously we, I saw that was put on TV uh, the last game. We were actually using them during the T20 as well, which I don't know if anybody picked up on. But it's not rocket science, really. It is literally just some strategic uh, suggestions from us to the captain of something for him to think about. It's not telling the captain what to do. It's just suggestions of what may or may not match up at any given point. Uh, and it's entirely up to the captain whether he listens to those suggestions um, or whether he goes with his own gut feeling. He's the man in charge out there. Uh, but like I say, it's just us communicating some ideas with him uh, on you know, I mean, what may or may not work at that given point in time. Um, and that's all it is, really. Martin, go ahead with your question, please. Uh, Chris, uh, we have seen... Uh... Lasit Malinga having animated conversations with, uh, with players during the matches, and also you have Navid Nawaz uh, assisting you as the assistant coach. Uh, how has it been working with uh, some local coaches? Uh, how are you coping up? And also, have we done any changes to the way that we are analyzing the game in terms of what we did in the past compared to what we did in the past? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, I don't, you know, I mean, I don't really know what Mickey or anybody did, did before me. Uh, so obviously, we've come in and we're just doing it the way that I know. Uh, but, I mean, coming back to the coaches, having local coaches with me has certainly helped. Uh, I mean, one of the things that I had to consider coming into this role was obviously the, the language barrier. I think having sort of Naveed next to me, who speaks very good English uh, and also obviously can translate for me, get the ideas across and get the points across for me is invaluable, to be honest. So, I mean, that has been a great help for me. And obviously having the guys around, I mean, Malinga and everybody else, I mean, we've I mean, I've got. I'm very lucky. I've got some good coaches around me. Uh, not only in the one day, but in the test, in the test arena as well. The guys that are working with the test guys for me at the moment are excellent as well. So, yeah, I mean, for me, that is a is a huge bonus having those guys that can obviously get the messages across for me if people are not quite picking up, uh, obviously my accent or my English really. Uh, so it does help. 
Sad, you can ask second question. Uh, Chris, uh, the players have been talking about uh, how relaxed the dressing room atmosphere is and how much of pressure you have taken off them. Um, can you just tell us uh, what you have done to change the dressing room environment since you came? Well, it's just been, I mean, consistent with everything I do. I try not to get too excited about things, uh, which is difficult at times, as you may have seen. <laughs> but it's, uh, you know, obviously you get into the game with the players just like everybody, but. For me, it's just about consistency around the dressing room. The players know what to expect of me every day and the way that I'm going to behave. And it's giving them the confidence to play the way that they want to and, and give them the confidence to express themselves with, without, with, in the knowledge that actually, if you get out doing something, that's fine, as long as I know it's part of your game. Uh, yeah, I mean, what we've found now is people are quite happy to go over the top, are quite happy to play their shots, they're happy to sweep. Uh, bowlers are willing to try different balls. And that's exactly what you want, because the more we do that, the better we will get at it. Uh, and we've seen, you know, it's players around the world, they, you know, I mean, they, they express themselves now, they're expansive. Batsmen play reverse sweeps, sweeps, they're not scared of hitting over the top. So we have to be in the same position where, where we can do that. And it's my job to try and give them the confidence and the freedom to better do that. Uh, and that's all I try and do, really. So. Like I say, it's just consistent consistency from from me in the dressing room, so they know what they're getting from me every day, um, and then just that clear line. I mean, very clear line, lines of communication on on what their roles is are and what uh, I expect of them, and you get that together, and obviously the results speak for themselves. Damigo, you can ask your second question. Uh, hi, Chris. Uh... I want to find out now, Dhoni Telalagi is the youngest player of, of the both team, just 19 years. I think he's uh, really performed well during the last three matches, three, four matches. How do you rate this player and uh, how do you think about this type of player for the Sri Lanka team at this moment? I think he's a, a wonderful young player. Uh, I think he's taken everything within his stride at the moment. He's got a very good head on his shoulders when it comes to uh, tactics around cricket uh, and I think he holds his nerve very well. I think it was uh, in Candy when he was one off something like 13, 14, maybe 15 balls, he held his nerve there and managed to get 20 on the board, which were, became I mean, so valuable towards the end in such a low, I mean, a low sort of uh, target that we set. So I think somebody, somebody like him has you know, I mean, shown what depth we've got within our system um, and for him to come in and do what he has at such a young age is, I think he's great. Uh, Rex, you can ask. Chris, uh, the tickets have been sold out for tomorrow's game, uh, yet there's a huge demand. Uh, a lot of people not able to, uh, uh, you know, get their hands uh, to the tickets and uh, not able to make it to the ground. What, be, what would be your message to all the fans who will not be able to make it to the ground tomorrow to see Sri Lanka beat Australia 4-1? Well, I mean, it's firstly, it's great that we have packed houses again. Uh, and to hear the Sri Lankan crowd singing and I mean, cheering and, and smiling has been absolutely fantastic. And it's really made a, a big impact on the players within the dressing room. It's made an impact on all of us. Uh, and we've really enjoyed that and we've enjoyed the support. Uh, but the guys that can't get in, obviously we're sorry they can't get in, uh, but still enjoy the game. Uh, you know, I mean, we feel that support that the country has given us and hopefully we can continue to give them something to smile about. Uh, you know, I mean, so for me, I think it's great, but obviously the fans are getting back into the, to the ground to come and support. Um, and as I say, we really appreciate that support. Louis, you can ask. Louis can Chris, ask. you, yes, thanks. Um... Thanks for standing. Uh, Chris, you, you mentioned the Ashes before. I know it's probably not one, some, not one you want to relive too much, but were there things from that series tactically, strategically um, on these Australians that um, that you picked up that could be of use to you and the team for the Test Series? Yeah, obviously, I, I keep notes on everything. Uh, I'm an avid scribbler, so to speak. Uh, so I have, you know, I've got my notes on the Australian batsmen from the Ashes. Uh, so there are various things that I have with me. Uh, but you're right, I'm not going to go too much into into the ashes. I mean, you know, just concentrate on the series in front of us and whatever knowledge I can bring from there to try and give to our guys, I will. Oh, I've lost everyone. Martin, you can ask, please. Uh, thank you. 
Chris, uh, Angelo Matthews has been playing uh, test cricket uh, for a period of time right now. Um, have you had any discussions with him about uh, bringing him back to the limited oversides or from your, based on your perspective, should he be in the limited oversight or has he been like uh, considered as a test specialist, uh, will be considered as a test specialist uh, in the future? Uh, <clears throat> well, at the moment he's obviously in the test team, uh, but yeah, I mean, for me, never say never, always keep an open mind to everything. So certainly, I mean, it'd be, oh, I'd be open for discussions about things, but at this moment in time, he's in the test team uh, and obviously he's preparing for the test series. I'll take a few more questions. Uh, Sadi, you can ask one. Um, guess, uh, how much of an impact does this uh, win, uh, ODI win against Australia having go, going into the test series? I think it would, I mean, certainly the guys that play multi format, it will give them confidence, I hope, going into the test series. Uh, and that's what I want them to carry forward, really. I want the guys that were in Bangladesh with us to, to bring the confidence from that series win there into this one. Um, I want the guys that are playing all formats to take, you know, I mean, obviously their knowledge of the bowlers they have faced, the batters they have bowled at, but, you know, I mean, but so they can they can take that confidence and that knowledge forward with them. But equally, we have to make sure that we're on the ball because we know Australia are a good side and we have to respect that and we have to give them the respect that they deserve. Uh, so we have to prep well and we're going to have to play well because, you know, I mean, I know one thing that the Australians will come hard at us uh, and we will have to be prepared for that. It'll be a, it should be a very good, exciting test series. Final two questions, one for Damika and the other one for Martin. Damika, go ahead with your question. Yeah, Chris, uh, I want to find out now, now we are playing against Australia, already won the ODI series. How do you look about our, now we, are, we have to go to T20 World Cup that's also playing in Australia. How do you look about uh, this ODI series victory to focus on T20 World Cup in Australia? Well, I think it's <clears throat> obviously the victories will give confidence. Um, it will help install the new way of playing that we're trying to get going. Um, it will give them certainly confidence in what they're trying to do and hopefully they will continue to express themselves. Um, that's what I want in T20 cricket as well. I want them to take that uh, and you know, I mean, keep pushing forwards. I don't want to put any ceilings on these players. I want them to go out there and and push the boundaries really and if we do that then we can compete with anybody we've seen that already that we can compete with one of the best teams in the world so as long as we keep expanding our game we keep trying to improve and, and, and move our skills forward in every department uh, like I say there's still plenty of areas for us to improve on if we keep doing that and keep working hard um, then hopefully we will see the results uh, come the T20 World Cup. Martin ask your question. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, are you planning to make any changes to the playing eleven tomorrow? Uh, I will. You will find out when we release the team. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give anything away until everybody knows what's happening here. Final question, Rex. Uh, you want to ask? I'm not coming for the same question. You know, same question. Thank you. So with that, we are ending the briefing. Thank you very much, Chris, for taking part, and uh, all pleasure. the best for tomorrow's game. And the journalists, thank you very much, and that's ends the briefing. Thank you very much, guys. Thanks for some. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. All the best. Right, Thank you.